Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I once again have the pleasure of meeting someone and introducing them to you for the first time. I have been chatting for just a few minutes with Doreen Milano, and I'm already quite pleased with her as a human being, glad that she exists, happy to know her, and excited to get to talk more about what she's doing now, what she's excited about in the world of coaching. Let me give you a little mini introduction before I let Doreen introduce herself. Uh, Doreen is committed to educating, building, and challenging people to rise to their best selves and make a positive impact on their bottom line. Healthy businesses support healthier communities. To that end, Doreen is focused on helping coaches build their organizations into vibrant and healthy businesses through a process she has discovered. Uh, Doreen, we already chatted a little bit about how that's your exciting focus right now. And so I'm excited yeah. to explore that with you and and just get to know you better. So thanks for coming on today. Awesome. Thank you. I'm so pleased to be here. Excellent. Well, let's uh let's go back to the beginning. Not the beginning beginning. That's that we don't have that much time. But let's go back <laughs> to the beginning of your your origins as a coach. Um, how did you first discover that you were either already a coach and just didn't have the terminology for it or how did you discover that coaching was a really good way for you to have the kind of impact you wanted to have on the world? How did you get your start on that path? Yeah. Grew up in a big, very entrepreneurial family. By the time I was 18, I was running three of the family corporations. Dang. When we decided to divest, I was in, what, I was about 25, 27-ish. And then I moved on into corporate America, where I started working for small corporations and discovered I had a knack for doing corporate turnarounds. Hmm. Now, a corporate turnaround is when a company is not making as much money as it needs to be making. And somebody comes in and starts tweaking things, <laughs> making adjustments here, making adjustments to marketing, making adjustments to the sales process, so on and so forth. And they start making a lot of money. Right? That's one should follow. One should follow the other. <laughs> when, should, when when should follow yes it should but it doesn't always right. so you know when when i was working in corporate america i said you know i have a knack for making millionaires multimillionaires and then when i got out you know i i played this game for small corporations mid-sized corporations and then enterprise level corporations hmm. and when i got into enterprise level i discovered that my code of ethics and my core values did not align with their core values mm. because they were playing with wall street and their whole thing was not about people. It was just about dollars. Yeah. And I really found my core was with people. Mm. That money was a byproduct of people doing things well. Mm-hmm. And so I said, this is what I'm going to be doing. So I exited corporate America and opened my own coaching program. And that was back in 2010. Yes. Mm. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so my motto changed from, you know, taking millionaires and making multimillionaires. I now take thousandaires and make them multimillionaires. Excellent. I like, I love that journey. And that's like, I, I find that even though your story is very, it's very specifically you, I find such commonality amongst many coaches in particular, like I've talked to a recent example comes to my mind where I spoke to, it's the episode that hasn't posted yet, but I spoke to a, a, a someone who was a very successful trial lawyer, like, mm -hmm. you know, high seven, low eight figures level of successful right. trial lawyer and really got to a point where he realized that he he want, he didn't want to have a divisive impact. He didn't want to exist in the world in that way anymore. He wanted to be more of a peacemaker and a bridge builder and a connector and just decided that there was not enough money in the world, even at that level, to make him want to continue down that path and just changed his life around that. And he eventually did become a coach, uh, um, a, a mediator. A, co right. a coaching mediator, which is just a fascinating journey, and I find that to be so common. Whether you're start what whether you're starting places, you know, millionaires to multimillionaires or beyond, or it's much smaller than that. I find that 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 steel rod, that commonality between every coach I talk to, is like, you know what, what I'm doing right now is not having the kind of impact on people that I want to be having, and so I'm gonna 
realign my life to to do that. I'm going to change yeah. that. And I'm I'm always fascinated by the the very unique personal journey that people go on, the, the very specific steps that they're, to their dance to them arriving at the thriving business they have in the well, coaching. It sphere. only made sense. I mean, what right? I was doing for corporate America in the middle of the financial crisis of 2007 to 2012. Well, in 2010 is when I walked out of corporate America and I said, I'm uniquely qualified to actually do this when I'm seeing, you know, very successful, you know, management personnel getting laid off from their jobs with no prospect of getting another job. So they're, you know, hanging their shingle and doing whatever it is that they do. And I'm watching them taking their severance pay and their their golden parachute and throw it into marketing with no idea what the heck they're marketing. Mm -hmm. Right. No idea who their target client was, no idea what niche they were playing in. They just went out and spent all this money and didn't make a difference and still ended up not being able to make rent. Yeah. And what a waste, what a waste of impact. Yeah. And I said, I can fix that. Hmm. I love it. I love it. So that's and, how and, that's how I started Vision to Excellence. I love it, and then and and then you did. That's uh, something I, I know. Like obviously, you could you can find sort of stories like this where people decided to like change their life and make an impact, and like it just you hear inspirational stories, but they always end the same with people like you. And then I did it. It's, it wasn't mm -hmm. just something I talked about. It wasn't just something I thought would be a good idea. It's not just something that I've that you saw in the world that had a need. It's like, and I did it. You're an action taker. And that's, again, one of those common things I find with the people who are really, who are really making a difference. They are, right. they are takers of action as well as guides. <laughs> well, if, if we get really honest about coaches and, and who we are and what we do, mm. we're great about helping people. Mm. You know, that is our passion. Our passion is the connection and, and delivering the help and making a difference. What we lack is a steady source of leads we can turn on and off at will. Mm -hmm. We lack the processes to convert those leads into high paying customers. We lack the detailed process by which we can take those high paying customers and deliver high yield results to keep that customer, not for weeks, not for months, but for years. Mm -hmm. My clients on average have been with me five years or more. Some of them I have had for 10 or 12 years. Excellent. What is the difference? Hmm. And I figured out what that difference is. That's the I figured out what the process is. I've connected with people <laughs> that have those processes and I have partnered with them to actually create something that allows co coaches to really benefit from having leads at will to creating high end results. You, you, you perfect segue. You're basically doing the hosting job for me as well as being an excellent guest. <laughs> 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 because that's exactly what my what, where my thoughts naturally go to. It's like, okay, so that, that's your that's how you got your start. Those were your pivot points, your your commitment to take action and have impact and really help people who like fill gaps where gaps were needed to be filled. And so let's talk about let's talk about today. Let's keep let's keep that conversation going. So obviously you're you seem to be focusing um very much on coaches and coaches the coaching business in particular and how this is something that comes up very, very often. That's on one of my focuses. You know, I still have my regular clients, right? Oh, of course, of course, of course. But as a coach, one of the things I do is I can sit down with any business owner and in less than 60 minutes, find them a minimum of $100,000 in recurring annual revenue in their business that they're sitting on, not recognizing and missing. Oof. I'm imagining how that feels at the, at the end of those 60 minutes. Are you minutes willing where... to have that conversation about your business? Exactly. Because that, that's a scary conversation because you're going to have to admit some things about what you've been doing. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. You're not. You're going to have to, but it's going to be there. There's going to be there. It's going to be, be there. I mean, whether you want to get that money or not, I can show you where it's hanging out. 
That's true. That's a very important distinction too, because it's like you could show someone where it's at, but then you, you have to tell them this is what you're going to have to do to get to it. And that's that's sort of an that's an advanced conversation because you might be able to acknowledge that it's there, but and that's not be willing. A 10 minute conversation. No. Ever. No. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you how's your coaching, how does your coaching business really operate today? Do you primarily do one-to-one -one work? Um, or do you have any like group coaching, mastermind? I have group coaching you know, programs. Speakers? I have one-to-one -one programs and oh, I have a DIY program. Oh, let's talk a little bit about that. For those folks who, you know, it's not in their budget or they are so busy that they've got to do this, you know, after the kids go to bed and between mm -hmm. that magic hour between 11 and 2 a.m., mm -hmm. Well, I'm I'm not going to be talking to them at 11 to 2 a.m. No. <laughs> no. So my DIY program is perfect for them. Hmm. So it is a online program that gets dripped out to them a lesson a week. Their commitment is to spend between three and five hours per work week working on their business. So they take the lesson, there's a workbook, they complete the lesson, they complete it in the workbook, and it is no more than three to five hours a week to do all of that. Sounds very achievable, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> it is achievable. I mean, it's it just that process of putting some structure behind your business mm -hmm. and putting that structure not only behind the business, but behind your life. When you're looking at your life, and especially when you're when you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, it's 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 such an interesting paradox, seeming paradox, where you have all of this, you have all of these things to do, all of these tasks, all of these responsibilities, and there's a lot of structure to it, and yet there's also a lack of structure in certain key areas, like this, where you really want to, you, you think you don't have the time. And that becomes def that becomes almost like a mantra, something you tell yourself, a story you tell yourself. It's like, well, I don't have time to do this kind of work. I'm, you know, I'm busy. Three you know, to five hours business. a week is one hour a day. Exactly. And I'm not saying when that hour's got to be. It's there. So like, like, the time is there. Between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. It's all on you, honey. <laughs> I like that you called it the magic hour because that's uh, that's been very much my experience as well, especially when you have all these responsibilities during the day. And it's just, I just, I've always found personally to have have some of my greatest availability of my creativity, availability of my like my best like thoughts and best feelings and best experiences around that time. Um, but when you get to that point, it's, it's 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 I love how you provide like one of the real value propositions of what you're providing. Obviously, it's like it's it's the detailed process. It's your your voluminous amount of experience and the work you put into refine it for people. And it's also just the invitation to make the time. It's like here I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make it as easy as it possibly can be for you. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, but I'm gonna make it as easy as it can be. Here's how you do it. Here's here's the time. Find the time where get it in where it fits in is something I find myself saying a lot because that's that's the way people run their lives now is you have to find the time where you can find it. But here is a structure. Here's a roadmap for you to begin. Well, let's get serious. When we started mm. working from home, structure went away. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And our calendar became our own. <laughs> when that happened we had to start creating our own structure. Now, I know a lot of folks have not created that structure. Nope. <laughs> and as a result, their life is overrun with everybody else's needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's others, you know, of us who defend our calendar to the death. Right? I've, le I've learned some hard lessons there. <laughs> because our me time our personal time is precious to us mm -hmm. as precious to us as our work time and our time to actually produce results. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whatever camp you're in, it doesn't matter. As long as you're taking the steps to improve yourself and improve your business on a daily basis. Comes right down to that, that, that 
said simply, plainly, and truthfully, and actionably. Yes. <laughs> that, that's it right there. I would you are at choice for everything you do and don't do. Yeah, exactly. Man, I would love to keep you for for longer, but I know we got to get you out of here. This has been a it's been a, a, a great tip of the iceberg discussion, which is what I like. It's why I like that's why I like keeping these episodes short because you can really get a taste for what someone has to offer and what what someone like you can really do for someone like our audience. So before I let you go, mm-hmm. I want to ask you. It's a two, it's it's a one question, but it's a two parter. Where can people Find out more about you, what you're doing, how you do it. Like, just find more of these resources. Just like start that process of learning more. And where can people best connect with you and start a conversation if they want to, if they want to explore working with you and seeing about taking that next step? So I'm easy to find. I'm all over the internet. <laughs> start there. But um, I have a TV show. Ooh. And you can find it on Rumble. It's Big Ideas Small Business TV with Doreen Milano. So you can search Doreen Milano or Big Idea Small Business TV on Rumble. I do that through the OBBM network. Hmm. And it is um, syndicated through Traverse TV. So you can see me on regular TV, um, Central Florida up to South Carolina's and parts of Central Texas. So um, you can find me. I'm easy to find. Uh, V2E.biz. Capital V, number two, capital E dot B-I-Z. And that is connects to my website. And then v2ecoaching.com. Easy. And I'll, obviously, I'll put all the links to everything, yeah. uh, everything I can find in the show notes. And your name is very searchable, Doreen Milano. A delightful name, by the way. I, forgot, I meant to compliment you. you on that before I hit record. I, just, I, I saw your Italian. name pop up and I was like, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I am Italian and that is my my surname, yes. I love it. I love it. I'm a New Jersey Italian myself. So I've got my last name Stafford, but that's from my dad, but all up and down my mom's side. It's, it's very, very Italian, New Jersey Italian. My grandfather was born in Chicago and came out to, to uh, California. He he helped (laughs) rebuild Cal uh, San Francisco after the big earthquake. Oh, wow. I, I might say I have to have you on again, just to talk about about your family history that's fascinating family history is like big in california yeah okay well yeah, i'm save that I'm, I'm gonna have to have you back on we'll talk we'll talk business and impact and coaching for sure but i think i might want to i want to get more of that family history story on our next episode if that's <laughs> all right with you <laughs> not a problem and well before i thank the audience I'm going to thank you. This has been a, a a short and sweet conversation, and I'm really glad I got a chance to get to know you and to help other people get to know you as well. Um, well, thank so you thank so you. much, Kevin. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, anytime. And to the audience, I mean, do yourself a favor. If this, if if any of this clicks with you, or you're like, ooh, I, I hear what she's saying, do yourself a favor. Find her links to everywhere that I can find, including that TV show, that show in the show notes. And we're grateful to have had you as a listener today, and we'll talk to you again here very soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day.